walk amongst thy people. The only thing that I trust is that you walk with me. Use me for your glory. Make it plain, make it clear. Yet profound that it would have impact to our lives. Give us a word that would help. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bring me to peace. Yes, Lord. I tell you, I, I want to I want to be brief and that's difficult to do. <laughs> But the message is a, a straight to the point message. Before I, I give it to you, I ask you to go to scripture. Let me first say that, and I always share with you how I tarry for a word because I think that that helps you to understand that it is not I. But God has to feed the preachers. If God don't feed us, we'll lose weight. We, we, we won't have nothing for you. Amen. But I think that God has fed me enough to help somebody. Because it has truly helped me to meditate on this word on today. Now, I have, I have one verse, but it sent me to another verse. So, so I, I need y'all to, to go with me while we have a little Bible study. If, if, I, if I get excited, that's when I just drop you off. Amen. I can't help it. I, 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 got, I got to celebrate what God has given us. So open your Bibles to, and you remain set, open your Bibles to Luke 10, 40. That's one verse, but we're going to preach from Luke 17. So the message gave birth because of Luke 10, 40. That one verse birthed the message that helped me help you. And put your finger on Luke 17 chapter. We're going to go right there after we read this, this one verse 40. Uh, uh, the 17th chapter. Put your finger on the 17th chapter. We're going to go right there. Begin with verse 1. You'll see the connection after we get going here. In, in Luke the 10th chapter, verse 40. Only the King James versions read this one verse with me. And I'm gonna, give me give me one moment here. Amen. We don't we we don't need nobody. Amen. That that verse 40 in concert together, it says, But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him. And said, Lord, doest thou not care that my sister have left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. Now, before you go to 17, I want you, I want you to get in my head with this. And 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 what I got out of that one verse, you know, this is Lazarus. Lazarus died, it's a beautiful story, but the Spirit didn't want me to focus on none of that. He just wanted me to focus on these two sisters. One is encumbered and, and, and want the other one to help. Now let's go to 17. Chapter 17. And we are going to read <laughs> the, the first five verses. I laugh because the fifth verse I was going to wait and 
get that to you, but I want you to hear that too. The first five verses, alternate reading, and in, in Eunice's, the last one together, I will begin. Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. text and give you what the Spirit has given me, that you will leave here today with an attitude that says, I can't help but help myself. I, I got to help myself. Now, the reason the Spirit gave this to me is because I find myself waiting on a lot of things. I, I find myself waiting on someone else or something. And the Spirit expressly gave me a push, gave me an unction to stop waiting on this particular project. Help yourself. And then in turn, the Spirit said, the people need to hear that. After it ministered to me and freed me from waiting on something that happened that may or may not said help yourself now when Jesus here in the 17th chapter he gives us something that could help us Martha with Mary only gave us a complaint and they were serving Jesus the Bible says that she was encumbered. She was burdened from serving. And this is Jesus whom raised Lazarus from the dead. And, it, it, and so she came to him and said, Lord, do, do you not care that my sister have left me to serve alone? Be in her, therefore, that she helped me. I need some help. But what did Jesus say? He answered and said, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful. And Mary have chosen that good part, which should not be taken away from her. You, you, you can't stop Mary, because Mary is helping herself. Mary understands that if I could just, if I could just get to Jesus, if I could just hang out with Jesus, if, if I could just sit at his feet and listen to his words of life, if I could be in his presence, I, I know that I'm helping myself. But then, in order to get really into this, because it is simple, but yet it is a profound statement to help yourself. Because as I remember, come supper time, especially when we would go back home, Louisiana, Texas, they would use those words like, do you want a second helping? <laughs> and, and, and if you want the third one, that's when they start saying, help yourself. You, 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 you've been here long enough you, you, you know the home. You know where the refrigerator and the stove is. And can you help yourself? Because it comes 
the time to where we really have to help ourselves. Now, somebody is going to be able to help themselves in their relationship. Something will be said or done that they will, they will turn the light on and, and you will find that your spouse is waiting on you to help yourself. And it would help them. I know we understand by helping ourselves uh, if we helping others. If I can just be a better pastor than I am, it's going to make you better. It's going to make us better. If you can be a better servant, a better usher, a better deacon, a better preacher, just a little better. You remember our theme for the year, a little bit more? Just a little bit more. You, you would find that you can help yourself. So here in the 17th chapter, the reason why I, I went here is because Jesus is trying to help the disciples understand the effects of bitterness and unforgiveness. And offenses will come. And, and he, but he told them that they're going to have to learn how to deal with offenses. That, that listen to the verse. The first verse says, Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible that offenses will come, but woe unto them through whom they come. It, it, it reads a little, a little funny, but what he's saying is, it's impossible for the offense not to come your way. In other words, they don't even think that you don't have to go through nothing. As long as you live, you're going to be buffeted, meaning that, that the, the enemy is going to attack you. He won't succeed, but he's going to upset you. He's going to frustrate you. Amen. He's going he gonna, to he gonna get on your last nerve, your last wit, whatever you want to call it, but he's going to try to get up under your skin. And once he do that, once he see you push the right button, now you can't even think straight. You think you're thinking straight, but you're not. Now you done tore your car up because your mind can't get off of the mess. So he, 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 he tells us here, he said, offenses will come. So prepare yourself. Know that they will come. In other words, somebody going to offend you. Yeah, somebody going to upset your peace. And you're going to have to learn how to make your peace be still. Because you, you understand your peace is still. Your, your peace is contentment. Your peace is a joy that don't even have to shout. Your, your, your peace, when Jesus said peace be still, peace, because peace wasn't designed to be in an uproar. It's no longer peace. Your peace has to be still. Those raging waters was at peace before the enemy stirred them up. But oh, Jesus put them under his feet and walked on the wall and made peace be still. We, we have to learn how to do it. Say, I, I'm telling you, don't just listen to this kind of preaching. Practice it. I don't know how to tap me into the power all that well, but I know it's there. And I know how to talk to him. And I call on him and I say, I need some. It feels like I'm trying to get sick. Something is trying to attack me. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And, and, and the next day, I'm feeling great. But I, we have to keep God in every equation of our life. And, and I use the word equation because that goes to our thinking. And, and you don't just think on your own. We're not that bright. And when you reach a conclusion, ask God's blessing on it. Ask his approval. But listen to how he protects us. Listen to how he how he feeds us. It, it says that offenses will come, but woe unto him through. I had to underline that word, preacher. Through. I had to underline that word. It said, it says, woe unto him through whom they come. Offense, offenses will come. You will be offended. But guess what? The one that's offending you, whoa. And when you really understand that, your attitude changes against 
we want your keys. Now, our attitude changed. Now we know that they're in trouble. You know, we go around talking, but they don't know who they're messing with. They really don't know. They really don't. But now you, the child of God, you know that, that, that God, it's too many scriptures. It, it, it's a scripture that says, in Hebrews, that God, God will avenge you of your enemies. You know what that means. He, 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 he said, he say, he say, I'll take care of it. You don't, that, that, that's not what I design you to do or to be. That's, that's not how I want you to communicate with people. I don't want you to fight fire with fire. I don't want when you get offended, you just fall all apart and you forget you my child. You forget that you're blessed and highly favored. You forget that you can call on me and I'm a present help in time of need. You forget. So you, so you want to strike back. If you want to strike back, zip it. Well, your enemy's so high. Your enemy's so high, they, 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 can, they can say what they want to say about you. They, they can talk about you up one side and down the other side. But listen, you don't suppose to get into that conversation. That's not your conversation. You understand that this person that's slandering you, that, that's scandalizing your name, that's lying on you, it's, it's not going to profit them. They, they, it's a terrible end. You've got to know that and don't get involved in that. And if it's something that, that, that people just put on you and say, I know you like this and, and you like that, they don't know you. So why you need to defend? <laughs> we don't need to defend ourselves against a lie. We don't need to defend ourselves against falsehood. We don't need to defend ourselves against no unsaved person that's throwing rocks at your glass house. We, we don't need to defend it. Because listen, if you go to try to defend yourself, it's, it, it, you, you know what happens? Your enemies ain't going to believe you. And your friends don't want to hear it. They love you the way you are. They don't, they don't believe it. They don't want to hear it. Don't bring that mess to me. That's my brother. That's my sister. So God has already equipped us and told us how we're supposed to deal with offenses. How we're supposed to deal with attacks of the enemy. How we're supposed to deal with those uh, ugly folks in their heart that don't like you for no cause at all. So he want to get us, he want to get us ready. He want to show us how to help ourselves. Then listen, listen to what he said. After he say woe unto them, whom through it come. He say, if it were better for him that a milestone were hung about his neck and he cast into the sea, then that he should offend one of these little ones. Now, if you didn't catch the first verse, now you know they're in trouble in the second verse. But now the third verse says, take heed to yourselves. Now, he's going to give us some instruction, y'all. He's going to show us how to help ourselves. Now, when I read Martha, Martha couldn't show us. Mary couldn't show us. Jesus, he told us what the priorities was. Him first. Seek me. And I will add, I will deal with all of that. So verse 3, he started to instruct us. He said, take heed to yourself if any, if, if thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. That's the first step. But it's rebuke him. No, let me take that back. The first step is you don't be an offender. That's the first thing. Don't put ourselves in that position. Don't offend people. I, just because they, they did you wrong, it's not fire for fire now. Come on. It's not lick for lick. It, it, remember the, the Old Testament, eye for eye. The New Testament, now we find out if you could keep putting out everybody's eyes, Martin Luther King said, everybody's going to be blind. So, and, and, and that's one of the main things that I'm finding a challenge with is trying to help people that will rest on the Old Testament and don't have the full understanding of the New Promises and the New Testament. And, and, and we refer, especially you get in a debate with a, a believer, and if they grab an Old Testament scripture on you, I mean, they, they dead in the water. You know, that was for your learning. But I want to know what we're supposed to be doing 
for today, in today's time. You know, that's, 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 we want, we want the New Testament. We want Jesus. And, and I, I, I wish my brother was here because I, I know we, we, we debate still about the Sabbath day. Yeah, we know the Sabbath day was Saturday in the Old Testament. We, we understand that. Oh, but when Jesus got there. Do you understand that? Oh, but when the New Testament came in. Do you understand that? When, when he, when Papa wrote a new will, when he said that old, this old will for my children was just the promised land of Canaan. I got a promised land. <laughs> Let me put it in the will. <laughs> it's a new testament. And I love it. Somebody read this the way it says a testament is not enforceable until the testator dies. Get up, Jesus. Get up, Jesus. So the will was in force when he died. And when he rose, the blessings flowed. And we got them. We, we more blessed than we are. We so caught up. You know what? We make it hard on each other. Because we look, we look at each other and say, hey, 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 hey you, you got it going on. So I don't like you. That's, the re that's what's really going on in the hearts. Envy. Jealousy. But, but God, God, God gonna hit the, we gonna help ourselves here. We gonna help ourselves because we, we, we gotta stop getting caught up in the worldly things. And, and we have to admit, I'm a product of it. I'm a product. I was raised in this community. I learned what the community was doing. They were shooting dice. I learned how to shoot dice until I crapped out. It says, it says, it, it says, rebuke him if he offend you, right? Rebuke him. Now, now, now listen, when when we rebuke, we have to, we have to speak. When you rebuke some some folks, some folks will be offended, and they won't they won't stand up for themselves. They they won't even tell the sister you hurt my feelings. At least let them know where you draw the line. You know that that hurt me. Hey, you're not saying it like I'm ready to fuss with you. You're saying it like I'm I'm getting ready to help you. Help me, help us. Because we can't talk to each other like this. Are you with me? We, 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 this is our daily living that we have to, we have to tighten up on it. Because why? We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the world. You know, our conversation is seasoned with salt, the Bible says. That means that we are trying to preserve the relationship. We're not trying to tear it down. We're trying to plant something, not pluck it up. So the Bible tells us that we ought to rebuke them, not fight them. We ought to rebuke them by speaking a word. Speak the word to them. You can't rebuke nobody in your mind, in your thoughts. I'm, I'm, I'm helping somebody because I, I know how, I know how people get upset. You know, you done hurt my feelings, and then and then I'm thinking about it. I'm gonna give you a piece of peace of mind. I'm, I got to get it together, but but I'm, I'm rebuking you. I'm re because you're wrong. I know you're wrong, hey, but but I got I got to get this together in my mind. Let me tell you something. You ain't gonna say nothing. That's been your habit. That's the way you that's the way you respond to offenses. But God is telling us today. Uh uh. You rebuke it, especially if it's somebody that, that you hang out with, that you got to see regularly. You got to let them know. You just, no, no, you don't talk to me like that. He says rebuke, it means that you have to speak a word. Because when you speak, your tone, your voice is the authority of what you're saying. I, I can't tell you I love you with an angry attitude. Rocks in my jaw. You ain't gonna believe that. I gotta, I gotta whisper. 
You let go of your anger. <laughs> you know, I got, I got to make you feel it. Amen. But when we rebuke somebody, it's not soft. It's firm. It's stern. And, and you've got to speak it. Unless you speak, they won't hear. Come on, say that again, preacher. I know that'll help me. Unless I speak, they won't hear. So I have, I have to rebuke them. It, it don't mean harshly. Rebuke them with love. But make sure it's firm. You look them in the eye and tell them. i never forget, but first year pastor, I'm standing out in the lot with the men. One of the brothers used profanity. I didn't rebuke him right then. He came on in, sat down. It was a brotherhood. You remember we used to have some good brotherhood Saturday morning. Sat on down in front of all the brothers. I'm a young pastor. I looked him in the eye and told him, don't talk like that again. I know you talk like that, but not in front of me. If you want me to be a good pastor, you help me to be. What would you say if I start cursing in front of you? You would like that. You, oh, no, pastor, you can't. Well, you, you, you said it. But, but, but he received it because I said it in love and I said it with wisdom that where the relationship just took off. Because, hey, people respect what you inspect. So, so, so we have to speak it. We have to, we have to say it. That gives it the power. If you don't speak to, to, to your enemy, your enemy will keep speaking to you. And you've got these emotions going on inside. You don't know what to do. You're just absorbing the, the hurt feelings you've got. But you got to even speak to your emotions. And if you don't, your emotions going to keep speaking to you, saying, I'm hurt. It's like cancer. We, got, we have to speak. So first of all, don't be an offender. Don't go around talking to any kind of way to people. Let your light shine. And then if anybody talk any kind of way to you, rebuke them. Don't fight them and don't try to top them. You, you, you know what I mean by top them. Don't, don't, you know, because, because you, you got a car and, and then they say, I got two cars. Yeah, you say, I've I, I been down there to the corner and they say, I've been around the corner. You, 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 you know, you got, you got people, free, you might have a friend that talk like that. You, everything you do, they can top it. You go buy something off. Oh, I, 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 I bought one too. And it costs more than that. I went somewhere every day. <laughs> but, but you have to deal with those folks. You know who they are. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if you help them, you help yourself. And then, 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 then we find in this sixth verse in this chapter, it says, and the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamore tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the seed, and it shall obey you. Do you, do you hear that? It says, it should obey you. Now, he said, Speak to the sycamore tree. <laughs> I, I'm careful, but I have to take you this deep. And, and those of you that read the Bible, you, you, I can't lose you with this. I, I know you've heard that you are trees of righteousness. And, and, and you know the creation of a tree that has roots, that has limbs, and leaves, and it bears fruit. Well, we are made the same. We are rooted in Christ. We are hooked to the vine, the true vine. And, and, and we bear fruit. And he promised that our fruit will remain. So he's speaking to the tree in us. When he healed the blind man, is that what do you see? He said, I see men that look like trees walking. So, so, so with that said, you should understand when I say, speak to your tree. Speak to your tree. He, he said, if you have faith and you can speak to this tree, then why can't 
you speak to your truth. It's too many of us that is planting trees. Now I'm going to your children and your friends. You, we planting trees, but we not cultivating. We just put them in the ground, give them water one time, and we think they're going to do the rest. But that's, that's not how it goes. Uh-oh, now I'm finna flip this. Jesus is trying to teach us how to plant and how to uproot. When we speak the word of God, we are planting. When we rebuke, we are uprooting. The Spirit talks to you like that. When we rebuke and we are uprooting something, we say, get the, ah, I want that in my spirit. I rebuke it. I won't receive it. But if you don't speak, you just think it. You ain't going to never say nothing. You ain't going to never do nothing. You're going to carry the burden. Like Martha, I'm in comfort. Somebody help me. Some, 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 somebody, some, somebody give me a hand. Jesus, don't you care that, 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 that she ain't helping me? If no one will go, you go. If no one is there to push you, drag yourself. You can't always depend on people. People will leave you out in the cold. And, 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 and guess what? They, they don't mean to. They, they truly love us. They leave us because they have a hard time themselves. The songwriter said say, say that I, I went to my friends for constellation. And my friends had problems too. So, so they can't help. They can't help. But I, I, I think I can help a little bit with this message. Because, see, I, I, I understand my thinking have progress. I remember when I was a, I was a young man, I, I wanted to do everything in a hurry. I'm still pretty fast. But I slowed that in a hurry down. You know, I, 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 was, I, 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 thought, I thought that I wanted to conquer the world. In, 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 a, in a sense, you know, but then I got wise, and I just wanted to conquer myself. <laughs> I, I, I need to, I need to, have, have anybody ever felt that you was a little out of control? A little out of control in, 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 in my eating, in my spending, in, in my leisure, in, in, in whatever, but I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I don't have it together. Help yourself. Help yourself. That's what this message is about today. This message is one of those help yourself messages because you can. But I, I got I got to give you I give you this last instruction, man. Because listen, we 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 won't be the offender. We will rebuke, and we will speak a good word to them. Yeah, we we will look them in the eye and let them know. And, and, and but if you don't take authority. Over, over over your speaking, then how could you how could you get rid of the root of bitterness that they have planted in you? You you know you're bitter about it because you can't stop thinking about it. I I I heard somebody say, they say "How you doing? You all right?" Yeah, I'm all right. I I just can't stop thinking about this problem I got. Well, you're not all right. You're not all right. You, you're trying to get right. And this is the conversation we have going on in our head. And this is what, this is, this is what Mary was doing. Uh, uh, Mary had a conversation with Jesus, but Martha, if I get mixed up, but, but Martha, uh, she was over here having a conversation with herself about, Lord, what is she doing over there? You know, 
got like the pastor talking about, where the demons at? What, what they doing? I ain't got no ushers on the door or nothing. No, I'm going to speak to you. <laughs> I'm going to come over in the fellowship house. Hey, church going on over here. <laughs> Y'all know how we are. <laughs> but, but, but if you don't rise up and conquer the flesh, it will conquer us. Because what will happen is it will swell up in you and you end up speaking wrong to people. So let's get to the last point. The third point is forgiveness. It's forgiveness. We cannot even use the power we have if we hold each other. The old folks will say there's nothing between me and my maker. That means that my prayer will get through. The Bible says be, before you even bring an offering, if you got an offer between you and your sister, you know what I mean? Don't, don't leave them. Don't even leave them. Go get that right and then, then come give it so I can bless it. Why are he telling us that? He's telling us that is because that's a seed that we get ready to plant. And he is the husband man of the harvest. He is the one that gives the increase. So if we give grudgingly, there's no increase. That seed will never see sunlight. But if it's wholeheartedly, oh, he going to, he, he, the Bible says he gives seed to the soil. So, so while we tithing and giving our offerings, offerings and our alms, he's, he's giving right back. It, it, it's coming and gone. So this forgiveness, this forgiveness, this forgiveness is pretty tough. Verse 3 and 4. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day. Somebody catch that. We always pull from seven. Seven times seven. Duh, that's the other verse. But I like this one even better. It's, it says seven times in a day. Turn again to thee and say, I repent. Thou shalt forgive him. In other words, if he keep on or she keep on insulting you, offending you, as long as they repent, you keep on forgiving. Because the first time you don't forgive them means that you holding the grudge, means that you holding up your blessings. It means that, that, that you are, are, are not helping yourself. It means that you can't help nobody else. Oh my goodness, I'm ready to take off with this, but I don't want it to be a, a shouting message. I, 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 I want to make sure that we have what you call a takeaway. We need something to take, take with us. And, and, and I'm tired of being offended. I don't know about you. I walk away from somebody that said something stupid, and I'm saying, boy, I sure, I sure could have let them have it, as wrong as they was. But I still took up too much mind power well, I should have just said, well, it, it, it. I used to like to say this when people talk to me funny, crazy. I used to look at them and say, you know what you're saying? Because that's how they would sound to you. Like, they don't know what they're saying. Do, so I would ask, do you know what you're saying? You know, say that again. Make sure that I, I heard you right. The second time, if they, if they can say it again, that's when it hit home with them. They know what they're saying. They know they're trying to offend you. But, but you're going to look them in the eye and say, I, I don't receive that. I rebuke it, as a matter of fact. And if we're going to be friends, we got to do better. We just got to do better. If I don't offend you, there's no reason for you not to, to be offending me. But listen to the Bible say, the honor have to be right. They have to repent. And somebody here, I know, boy, I love it when the Spirit talks to me. Somebody here has been forgiven people that have not repented of the offenses they have put upon you. Because of your Christianity, because of your love of God, you forgave them. And you, you even forgave half-hearted confessions, repentance. 
Remember what true repentance is. It's turning completely away. So how could you offend me again? That means that your last repentance wasn't true. You continue to offend me, and then you're going to say you're sorry? And you're really not sorry? And here I am forgiving you because I know the word of God. I'm not going to cut my blessings off. I'm going I'm to keep a clean slate with the Lord, and I don't want to harbor ill feelings against you. So I have to forgive you. I have to let go. I, I, I feel some heavy hearts in this sanctuary. I, I feel it in the spirit. Why? Because minds get heavy. Just talking about it, minds get heavy. Because I know the believers are the one that put up with more offenses than anybody else. The believers just take it. But we don't know that, that we carry a burden by not speaking with the authority and the power of the anointing that's in us. It will quench the fiery darts of the enemy if you would only open your mouth. The Holy Spirit will do the talk. So the Bible tells us that we have to learn how to help ourselves because when we read with Martha and Mary, we read someone that don't know how to help themselves. We read someone that feels that she cannot make it on her own. And if you really want things to change in your life, you have to make it happen for yourself. I've been to a lot of self-help groups, and I love the self-help groups because they teach about positive thinking. They teach about what's right and what's holy. And they help your mind to stay positive. But I would need to tell you today that self-help groups cannot do it like Jesus. Clichés won't ease your pain. You have to help yourself. You have to make your own future and not wait on somebody else to make your destiny. You have to go ahead and help yourself. All of the advice in the world have never helped me until I started to help myself. And you can't but help yourself when you find out what you have on the inside. The Bible tells us that there is helps in the church. It, talking about the ushers and the deacons uh, that is here to help the church. The Bible tells about uh, those that help with the homeless and with the poor. But I need you to know that there is a need on the inside of yourself that need some help. And after you have been not offender, after you have rebuked folks, after you have forgiven them, now you can help yourself. Helps will come along. The Bible tells us that my help will come from the Lord. So I look toward the hills which come at my help. For the Lord is our shepherd, and he maketh us to lie down in green pastures. I say he maketh me to help myself. That's the way the Lord operates. That you may get in a dilemma and you're waiting on somebody. But the Holy Ghost will stir up something in you that make you get up out of your seat and begin to help yourself. 
when David was in trouble, he called upon the Lord and he found out that he was a present help in time of need. When David started to worship God, he found out that he was the righteous right hand of God and Jesus was the intermediator. And he called upon Jesus in every affliction and Jesus delivered him out of them all. If we can just help ourselves, we'll find that we feel so much better when we look on the inside instead of the outside and tell our soul to be at rest, tell our spirit to be at peace and go on about your life. When they arrested Jesus, when they mocked Jesus, he didn't say a mumbling word because that's not the way we fight. The Bible tells us that we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in high places. The wickedness that will offend us. And the Bible tells us that Jesus knew that he had to be silent. And when he opened his mouth, it was only to forgive them, for they know not what they do. He had to clear the slate for his Lord because he knew that he was getting ready to go home in a minute. And they buried him in a borrowed tomb. But early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, the rocks cried out. They was moved away. The Bible says that the earth shook and let the graves open and that the saints walked in the holy city. The Bible says that the veil was rent in two from top to bottom. The Bible says that it went black from the sixth to the ninth hour, but when the lights came back on, the Bible says that we were justified from the shed blood of the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundations of the world. He helped us. Now we can help ourselves. Stand up, child of God, and help yourself to a second helping of the anointing of God. Help yourself to the grace that is sufficient for God. Help yourself. This is an altar call. Every head bowed. The Spirit is telling me that the forgiveness needs prayer. We have forgiven folks, but why are we still dead? We have forgiven some folks. But it seemed like the pain is still there. It don't hurt like it used to. But it, 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 it feels like I still carry some of it. Our Father, we know that it's only a memory. But because of our forgiveness, because of your word that we apply to our life, it can't hurt us no more. It's when we recall the offense, it hurts to remember. But Lord, thank you for helping us help ourselves by not being the offender, by not fighting back, but with your word being spoken in our prayer that they be better have given us peace. Now, Lord, it's that one person that's in my life that I, I, I can't seem to get over. It's because of the bitterness 
that I discern between us. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I pray that they repent, that they too may be free. The Lord search my heart. Make sure that my forgiveness is true. Make sure that I'm free to pray for them that despitefully use me. Make sure I'm free to love them. Help me help myself. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. You name the hands of our deacons.